Hey, I don't know why I have problems getting in. Did anyone else have problems signing in? The link didn't work for me. All right, let's get started. I am going to um, let me see if let's see. Is anyone from the from the office in from the district office? Um, I just want to be able to share the agenda. Uh, Heather, it's Barry. I'm not sure that um, Yutha or Madison remembered that this is this was moved up to 5 p.m., but I've just gone ahead and made you a co-host. Okay, so let me put the agenda up. I don't know. I had problems signing in because um, we had some changes to the agenda. Okay, can everyone see? Um, the agenda, and then we'll go ahead. Thank you so much, Barry. I'm glad I was like, I have to call Barry. Um, okay, committee members. Um, let's see what committee members we have. Okay. Okay, I see Hugo and I see Liz. Are there any other committee members on? Okay, so there's just the three of us. I don't see Jonathan on yet. I think he was supposed to join us. So I'm gonna go ahead and call the meeting to attention at 5.05. And Liz, do you want to second that? I second. Okay. Hi, Heather. Hi, Liz. All. It's Yuta and Madison here at the district office. Who started this meeting for you guys? <laughs> I think Barry did. I had a hard time signing in. Thank you, Barry. Yeah, I did, Yuta. <laughs> oh, I didn't know Barry. Okay. <laughs> Because I just checked the time. We were in a meeting and I just got back. I'm like, oh my God, we got to start on landmarks. Okay. Right. Okay, so um, we, we have a very busy um, meeting today. Um, let's see, did any, the, the two of us, we're just calling the meeting to attention. I also need to adopt the minutes from the previous meeting. We really can't do that because we don't have a quorum. <laughs> so um, please make sure that you read the, the minutes and, and send me any updates. And then we're going to get started with the agenda, with the parks announcements and updates. I know that Leslie Wright is not here today. She sent me an email. So we're gonna go ahead and start with Mallory Craig at the Greenhouse. Are you on, Mallory? Okay, so we'll go on to Matt and Jaina. Are you on? Does anyone have any other additions? I, I feel like I'm talking to myself here. Let's see. You're, you're good, Heather. We're, you we're... can hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah Heather, you're, you're doing on. great. Just keep rolling through the yep. list. They're not right. Really here. <laughs> Karen okay. Master is on, Heather. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, who's who was that? Karen for Friends oh, of St. Okay. Nicholas Park. All right. So Karen, if you have any updates then for um St. Nicholas Park. I do. I have two brief updates. Um, happy spring, everyone. Uh, so we have two really great events uh, coming up in April. Uh, the first is this Saturday at noon. It is our annual free community Easter egg hunt. Uh, so we'll have, an, uh, of course, an Easter egg hunt, but we'll have uh, face painter crafts. Uh, we'll have a visit by the Easter Bunny. So that starts at noon. So spread the word. And um, we usually have a really good turnout and hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, for really good weather. And then our second event, um, another annual event that we have every year is our Earth Day event, which is coming up on Saturday, April the 22nd. And that starts at 11 a.m. and goes till 2 p.m. And we're going to have a, a big cleanup. Uh, it's, so, and we've got a number of terrific partners with that event, including Table of Kings, 
a couple of sorority groups from uh, alumni groups in the area, Eagle Academy right there on St. Nicholas uh, Avenue. And so we expect a really huge turnout for that. So we'll have some music and you know some festivities there. We're also celebrating 15 years of the Trash Project, who's our longtime partner in our cleanups in the park. So that should be a really fun event as well. So please come out and join us for both. Great. Um, and then for the um, event this Saturday, you said it starts at noon. What time does it end? Uh, it's always a little fluid, you know, probably between 1, 1 1.30. It's best to get there at noon because we, we tend to uh, roll the agenda along based on how many kids are there and how antsy they are and how young they are. So and this is St. Nicholas Park? It is St. Nicholas Park. Right? Is there any particular location in the it's park? A, it's on the James Baldwin lawn. So the right James at Baldwin. Yeah, 135th okay. and the St. Nicholas Avenue at the plaza there. Agree. Okay, does anyone else have any questions? Thank you, Karen. Okay, is Brad on yet for Morning Site Park? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Uh, okay. Thanks, Heather. Uh, good to see everyone. Hi, Karen. Um, yeah, so Morningside, I mean, Morningside and St. Nick, you know, we've got our Harlem Youth Gardener program starting up. I don't know if uh, Karen mentioned that already, but um, so the, the 15th um, will be the first day. Uh, they'll be working three weekends in Morningside Park and then go up to St. Nick for, for five weekends. So really looking forward to that. Uh, we have a second Saturday event we do every month between March and November, which is coming up this Saturday, and we've got about 100 people signed up. It's just amazing. It's just off the charts. So we have a school group of about 50 uh, this is a little, little tiny ones with their parents, um, and then we've got 50 uh, just regular signups for that, so that's fantastic. Um, Earth Day, we're, we're also doing a couple of walking tours. Um, at 11 a.m. and then another one at uh, 2.30 p.m. Um, and in between, we've, we have a, a group that's coming in to do a, a planting project. So, uh, and uh, this stuff, um, we're working with uh, Jana on, on Earth Day. Um, and so it'll, it'll run from 12 uh, to five, basically. She's got some other things planned as well. So that's great. Okay. Um, and then what's the name of your event for this Saturday with 100 people signed up? It's called Second Saturday. Or just called Second uh, Saturday. Yeah, Second Sa second Saturday volunteer event. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay, and then the Harlem, how, how many participants did you get signed up for the Harlem Youth Garden? Well, we have uh, 20, 20, 24 slots, uh, which we'll, we will fill up. Uh, Interviews are going on uh, as we speak, and uh, we had over 90 applicants for those spots, all, all from CB9. That's what I was going to ask next, How if, if everyone was from CB9. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Okay, anyone else have any questions for Brad? Okay. Um, Wesley or Stephanie? All right. Um, did anyone from New York City Parks come on yet? Okay, Whitney, are you on for I the am on. Hi. Actually, Stephanie's here too. I see her. Yes. I'm not sure if she's having any trouble. Sorry, can y'all hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure if Wes was on, so I paused extra long to see if he would jump on. Um, okay. thank you so much. Oh, I think I'm I think you can see me, hopefully. Hi. Um Yes, so um, in the midst of uh, our team core um, uh, planning and team core curriculum, uh, very much like the Harlem Youth Gardeners, which is super exciting that there's so many uh, youth opportunities this summer. Um, but yeah, we do have a paid internship this summer uh, in July and August. Uh, we are accepting 15 applicants straight from CB9 um, uh, who are high school age and they get to learn about horticulture and environmental justice. Um, so really excited to uh, be working um, with some CB9 teens this summer. So if you know of anybody who's interested, um, send them my way or send them to the Harlem Youth Gardeners. Um, and yeah, and then I'll take it over. Uh, that was all that I had today, uh, but I'll have 
more next month. So Whitney, you take it away. Sure thing. Hi, everybody. Okay, uh, thank do, you. Do you need to share, Whitney? I would love to, if that's possible. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. Short okay. little PowerPoint, just with some basic information on it. Um, but I usually come to the CB9 full. I'll be there too a little later this month, but wanted to uh, say hello and introduce myself, especially as we start to launch our full summer schedule in Riverside and West Harlem Pierce Park. So I am the director of public programming uh, at Riverside Park. Oh, uh, I have disabled participant screen sharing. Okay. Um, let's see. Can someone get Whitney? I'm looking for the where do you give um because i didn't start let's see trying to give whitney permission it's not I, anymore i think i just got it okay there we go all right let me just uh pull up my little slideshow real quick i remember how to there we go Oh, that's, sorry. I am actually slightly hey. technologically inept. Hey, Whitney, there we go. it's Shannon. Um, Hi, bottom, Shannon. There you go. I was gonna say yeah, bottom. You got right, it. You go. <laughs> yeah, I, I got it. Um, so hello, I, I'm the director of public programming at Riverside Park. Uh, I run Summer on the Hudson, which is our arts and culture festival that takes place uh, every May to the beginning of October from 59th Street all the way up to the George Washington Bridge. So that includes um, all of Community Board 9, um, especially our programs in West Harlem Piers Park. Um, everything we do is free, brought to you by New York City Parks and the Riverside Park Conservancy. Over 250 events all summer long health and wellness, concerts, children's events, full day festivals, educational workshops, uh, and much, much more. Uh, we are getting ready to launch our full calendar. Um, that should all be available soon. We actually got all of the brochures delivered to our office today. So I am very excited to share that with you uh, in the coming weeks. But in the meantime, I just wanted to say hello, give you a little preview of what's coming and then show you where to find us online. Uh, and then I will see the full board in um, a little later in the month with physical brochures. So we're excited uh, to be basically back full pre-pandemic capacity. This is actually going to be our biggest season ever. Uh, we have about 282 events on the docket right now. Uh, so those will begin the first week of May. Uh, something I'm very excited about in CB9's territory particularly is a, a sunset yoga practice that we're bringing to uh, the lawn at 145th Street. Uh, that will run Thursday afternoon or Thursday evenings uh, from June to September. Um, so a lot of uh, exciting stuff coming to you guys this season, some new music partnerships, um, a birding club headed up by one of our zone gardeners who uh, is hoping to foster a, um, a more robust birding community in the northern part of the park. Um, and of course, some returning fav favorites uh, will be back with a fishing clinic with Friday night concerts and kids events in West Harlem Piers, our very popular dance fitness class that takes place Saturday mornings. Uh, of course, things like bingo, dance classes, tango, tango nights, uh, all kinds of things. So here is where to find us on social media. I'll give everybody a second for that. But basically, we're on Facebook and Instagram at Summer on the Hudson and Twitter at Summer on Hudson. And that's where we post a lot of our um, previews of what's coming up, weather cancellations, things to look forward to, um, the events in action and that kind of thing. And then this last slide is probably the important one, but this is how to reach me. Um, like I said, our schedule is in the process of going live, but when it is live, it'll be at that parks address that you see. Um, I am always happy to chat or uh, take questions or anything. So that is my email address. Uh, that you can you can find me at as well as my office line uh, for any questions if you want a delivery of physical brochures we will do that for you personally uh, so like i said i will be bringing some hard copies to uh, the full board meeting later in the month and uh, over the next couple of weeks we'll be making some deliveries to um, the city council offices local senior centers um, all, all those kinds of facilities um, around the neighborhood. So we look forward to seeing you in the park. I'm really excited for you to see our 2023 schedule. And um, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, 
So you can stop sharing your screen. And if, if everyone will please put um, sign into the chat, that helps me keep track of who was here. Um, and if I don't already have your contact information, such as your email, then please put that in the chat too as well. So we're gonna, um, let's see, has anyone else from Park shown up? Because um, we have maybe about a few more minutes left to, um, Otherwise, uh, we'll go ahead with yeah, the. Uh, yeah. um, this, this is Robert McLean. I'm from Parks. Uh, I'm a regional, and uh, I'm just waiting for uh, Jana and um, Matthew. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, so, if there's um, no other parks announcements and updates, then we'll start on the presentations and then we'll go back to the park announcements. So, um, Let's see, is Carl Stein here for the Wingate Hall? Hi, um, hi Heather, it's Pat Jackalone from Elemental. Carl is minutes away from logging on. I okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he thought he had a little more time. <laughs> okay, is, um, let's, let's try a couple of these shorter two minutes. Um, is good vibes in the park on? Is good vibes in the park? Okay, go. It just takes it takes a bit to do that unmute button as quick as possible. Uh, would you like me to go ahead and present? Yeah. Do you and and no no longer than two or three minutes. Is that okay? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I was told five minutes. I can work with three minutes. I, I just would like to also give everyone an opportunity if they have a question or not. So. Okay. Yeah, we'll ask. We'll ask for questions at at the end. But go uh, ahead. No. Do you need to share a screen? Yes, I would need to share my screen. If you could give me that permission, um, just give me maybe thirty seconds to to uh, orient myself, and we could be good to go. So, while um this is happening, just want to say. Um, I've been to present, or, or are we, okay, we're good, all right, how's everyone doing, uh, my name is Ayo, or some people call me Motion, I represent Good Vibes in the Park, I've been here before, um, so some of you may be familiar with me, in fact, we did get a letter of support uh, from CB9, I think it was about two years ago, uh, the main purpose of being here is uh, I know that we have some new members, so just using the opportunity to share what Good Vibes in the Park is all about, and I will start by doing this. Here we go. My name is Ayo in Motion. I really want to welcome you to Good Vibes in the Park. This is the time of the evening where you connect and you relax. About safe spaces. It's about us connecting, enjoying each other. I came because I found on Instagram through a friend, and it was really amazing. It's like this really awesome documentation, and as you can hear, the music's really beautiful, and it's really just a lot of great vibes. How are daydreaming about the details of your face? Is this knowing? First time that you're back in the park. But literally, ever since I've been out here, it's been nothing but good vibes. Uh, came out by myself, but I knew that when I was going to come out here by myself, that I wouldn't be by myself. And again, it's the first and many more to come, all weather permitting. Uh, and it's been a beautiful thing. Hey, everybody. My name is Samantha Flynn. This is my first time here at Good Vibes in the Park. Today was absolutely amazing. This is the first time I've really been outside. So to come here with my people, you know what I'm saying? And to perform, you know, do what I love and have people enjoy it. It's really been great. You know, seeing everybody get loose and dancing and meditating and vibing, you know what I'm saying? Today was really great. And I'm grateful to be a part of it. The music, the vibe, the beautiful, the beautiful people. This is an experience that you just got to experience at Harvard. Okay, Ayo, can you just tell us what it is that you what you're needing from from the board? For sure, I could do that. Thank you. <laughs> One second, let me just pause this. Uh, 
No, I always think it's important to lead with that video because it tells you what Good Vibes in the Park is all about without me having to do so. These are the residents of Harlem speaking about how this community activation is really making a difference. We started in the middle of the pandemic and we keep it going. I'm here because one, um, we would like the letter, a new letter of support. The one we got was during COVID and it's it's a bit dated at this point. So we would like a fresh new one off of that to be updated. Um, and the letter of support actually leads to the second reason I'm here, which is that um, having become a Harlem staple, we're in a, in a situation now where we're seeking um, external funding resources. Good Vibes in the Park has been funded um, primarily by me and a few other people who are in Harlem have been trying to make this happen. But we're just getting to a point where we don't really have a lot of funding to continue. Um, a lot of, of what we're doing and would like us to continue with our programming. It's usually through the summer. Uh, it's June one each month, June, July, August, and we kick off on Juneteenth. So I wanted to come here, one, for the letter of support, but also to just reintroduce ourselves to the members of this community board in case you have any access to um, any organizations, any potential forwarding resources because we've decided by um, that if we get to the end of May and we don't have any amount of money to be able to do this, we won't have this, we won't just program this summer at all. And that just puts our future in jeopardy. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'll take any questions. Heather, this is Karen. If I could just jump in with, an, with a comment. Go ahead. Uh, so yeah, we work, uh, Friends of St. Louis Park have worked with IO and Good Vibes in the Park for the last, this will hopefully be the third year I'm right on that aisle, or more, more. Um, Third, yeah, fourth season, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, for, for officially for our, our, you know, our Juneteenth celebration, which we've made one of our signature free community events um, starting a few years ago, and we worked with IO on that event. And it's a really, if you haven't had a chance to come out for it in the past, it is a really great community event. Um, just, uh, it's, and it's very unique um, for, for Harlem, for the space, and really for the city. And um, so I, I really just echo how valuable a uh, programming this is and a way to connect with with our community that isn't um, really seen that often. So uh, thank you so much for, for saying that, Karen. Um, a lot of the time people ask us what the benchmark amount we need to make this happen for each edition. Um, we need somewhere between four to five thousand dollars. Uh, a central part of what makes Good Vibe in the Park special is our mental health aspect. So we usually do that meditation movement meditation and then we have mental health practitioners who are present and talk to people about how they can work with coping mechanisms a lot of the people who lead this are, are local Harlemites or local New York City uh, New Yorkers it's important for us that we, we pay them and we compensate them for their time and efforts they do give us a discount but it would be unfair to them to expect them to do this for free so that usually costs about a thousand dollars um so we're just looking for for that amount for that as well as you know the sound stage and all the logistics that comes with the equipment that's usually another thousand dollars. And then lastly, you know, the book and the creatives that make this happen. In the video you saw, we had um, you know, a saxophone player, a full band, and things of that nature that comes to typically another thousand um, dollars. But so at the very least, we we work somewhere between three to five to make each edition happen. Uh, and this time around, the minimum we would need to even be able to make good vibes happen on Juneteenth is about four thousand dollars. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Um, has has any of your protocol changed um, now that we're, you know, moving out of the COVID pandemic? I know that there was the social distancing issues when you were here last time that you spoke of. So um, I assume that that's changed or that's different now. Yes, that's changed now. I mean, it's the same restrictions don't apply. We just pretty much go here, whatever the, is the is the expectations in the cities to be outdoors. So that's also one of the reasons we need the LOS letter of support to be updated. Um, also, I, I, I would respond to all the questions being asked in the chats. But when the time comes around, June 17th is the first one. So uh, any organizations are interested in like even sponsoring an activation, we also take in kind donations. So for example, if you're saying, hey, you know what, we can't give you $500 or $1,000, but we can maybe sponsor the meditation directly, or we have some resources. We also sort of accept in-kind donations as well. Um, so no, Good Vibes in the Park is not a 501c3, but we partner with Harlem One Stop. They are fiscal sponsor. So all the money we get goes through them and they are, they're government approved and they're 501c3. So we're able to receive money that way. Okay, thank you so very much. So, um, Bazia, do you um, do you want to give your one or two minute? Um, are you on? 
Hello. Okay. Yes, hi. Um, may I? Go may ahead. I you, you have yet yeah, two minutes. Yes, hi. Um, some of you may know me. My name is Basha Nikonoro. I'm a resident of CB9. I used to be formerly on the community board and I'm a co-leader with uh, Michael Palma of the Montefiore Park Neighborhood Association as well as I founded the 137th Street um, Block Planting Day. As a result of reaching the 10th anniversary edition of the Block Planting Day, um, we were looking for some kind of fun way to um, sort of take our story of success from the street to a broader community. And we landed on a children's book. And that children's book is going to be available to be distributed for uh, free around the city. And um, I'm reserving some copies for uh, community boards, schools, daycares, and libraries. But I wanted to just alert um, this wonderful committee about this educational outreach tool slash children's book. So it's, um, I should say it was crowdfunded with over 160 people, as well as matching grants from Con Edison and the Tishman Center at the New School, as well as City Parks Foundation. And I'm thrilled um, to tell you about it and hopefully at the next meeting to show it to you as well. It's called, it's here behind me, 17 Trees to be precise. Thank you so much. We look You're forward welcome. to to when we have more time to seeing that. Um, although I Thank heard you. you in the Health and the Environment Committee. Um, <laughs> let's Thanks. see. Is there, um, does anyone else have any questions for Basha? Who should, who should people reach out to if they would like to get a copy for their school or daycare or what have you? Great question. You can reach out to me and I will put your, uh, I'll put my email in the chat. Please, yes. Put the information yes. about the book in the chat too as well. Okay. Okay. Okay, Carolina? Yes, can you hear me? Uh-huh. Um, I had a question about sort of if folks are asking for a letter of support, is there a process that they have to go through? Are we confirming that we're doing a letter of support? I don't know if we completely closed the loop on that with um, sort of the ask for uh, Ayo, Good Vibes in the Park. Okay, good catch. Um, um, I guess we do need to, let's see, let's see if we have a quorum. Um, there are, I think, four of us. I don't believe we have a quorum yet. Um, so we just called the meeting to attention. There are only four of us on out of the eight of on our team. So we don't have a quorum yet to do a letter of support. Uh, Adam, I don't know if it's something when you do have quorum, you can vote on um, just because that's something that we, we definitely do do need and it's a bit time sensitive. Um, so whatever can help to facilitate that, that would be incredibly helpful. Carolina, thanks for the catch. I was so busy trying to be fast with the time I was given that the first ask uh, slipped through the cracks. So I appreciate you catching that. No problem. Um, let's see. Let me, let's see. Who are we? We're missing um, Jonathan. Um, Dan, maybe we do have close to a, and we're and we're missing Patricia Caldwell. I don't think you have to count um, Dan Cohen as part of your quorum denominator because he's on official leave of absence. Oh, okay. So then maybe, and and I don't have to count Michael Palma either. <laughs> uh, he is not on official leave of absence. <laughs> um, so we he, okay. He, he is not reapplying to the board. So I think that's where that stands. Okay, so there are four of us on, then we have Dan, we don't have to count. So it's only Jonathan and Patricia Caldwell and Michael Palma. So maybe we do have a quorum now. Yeah, I because think Because there's four, four of, of us on and three missing. And Dan doesn't count. 
So at 533, we'll call the meeting to order with a quorum of the four of us out of seven. Does anyone want to second that or let me know if I'm incorrect? Yeah, yep, second. Thank you, Hugo. <laughs> okay, so then we'll go ahead and vote then as whether or not we'll uh, um, provide a letter of support to IO um, and to get, get that um, on the agenda for the executive committee meeting on Thursday, next Thursday. Is anyone opposed or does anyone have any questions? These are the committee members. No, I support it, Heather. I support a, an updated letter for good vibes. So is there un, um, unanimous consent? Yep, second. Uh, second. Okay, so then we'll get you that letter. I O with, with um, it passed then with unanimous consent. Very Heather. much appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I've put my email in the chats. If anyone needs to reach me as resources or things we can use to make this happen, suggestions, input is welcome. Definitely funding is welcome. So please reach out to me. My email is in the chats. And thank you so much for updating the letter of support. We're excited and we do hope that it makes a difference in our pursuit for funding. And Go if, ahead, Liz. If there's anything in the old letter that you would like changed or if there's something you would like to see in it that we wouldn't know to include if you could just uh, send that information to Heather that would be helpful for us I certainly will do that thank and you and I sent Liz. you an email about that too yesterday I think Io and I didn't I didn't hear back from you so I please I responded to you five minutes before before the meeting, meeting okay after. so I missed so it I'm, I'm sitting in your inbox no. Okay. <laughs> no, no, you All didn't right. miss it. Thank it just you. Didn't arrive. It <laughs> okay, would. thank you. Yeah. All, right. All right. So let's keep it moving. Um, anyone else from parks? Because I just want we we have um a little less than <laughs> we have oh I see Jana on. Hi, Heather. Hi, Io, Karen. Hi, everybody. Um, just real quick, uh, thank you for this meeting. And Io, it's so wonderful to have you at St. Nicholas Park and uh support you so thank you for the committee for that uh, support of him and all that he brings to the community uh two just a heads up um i, I won't go into a whole bunch of details uh, around the parks activities but uh morningside park there's an earth day on april 22nd i should have the materials back by early next week so i can uh, share those um and um also heads up that for everybody just in the wider community and I know I think it's Miss Caldwell who asks about Jackie Robinson but the Jackie Robinson Day Festival is April 15th and it's going to be fantastic for everybody in Harlem not just the Jackie Robinson Park folks so please come on by I'll share those Heather with you guys as well um, and we're just excited for April um, in, in the parks in spring and the volunteering uh, that Friends does, for instance, around gardening and Friends of Morningside Park with gardening. So feel free to come join us uh, if you want to garden. Thank you so much. Is Matt on or Wesley? Yes, I'm on. Sorry, I got my um, wires crossed with the, the change of time. So, <laughs> but I apologize. Uh, so, um, uh, I'm kind of looking uh, ahead here to May since uh, uh, we meet in the beginning of May. Uh, uh, May 5th, there's going to be a movie night at Jacob Schiff. Um, once we have uh, flyers here later on this month, we'll make sure to distribute those. And then there will also be a, a movie night May 6th uh, in St. Nicholas Park. Um, so once we have a, a flyer for that, we'll we'll get make sure everyone's aware. Um, and then uh, it's my park day. I know our partnerships for parks team will be reaching out to all of our community partners. Uh, May 20th and 21st will be the it's my park day weekend uh, this um, this coming May. Uh, the pro uh, state of good repair uh, project path, uh, you know, they're still uh, moving along at the south end of St. Nicholas Park. We expect the, the southern end to be wrapped up uh, this month. Um, and then for them to move up northward uh, at 120th. And we in still anticipate all of the work to be uh, completed prior to, uh, or the majority of the su substantial completion to be completed before Memorial Day weekend. Um, those are my quick updates. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to, 
to answer them. Any questions? Okay. So we're, we're getting, I think we're on schedule. Um, let's see if I missed any Brad, Brad has his hand up. It looks like he might have a question, unless that's an old hand. Yeah, okay. no, no, I, I just put that up. Thanks for uh, noticing that, Matt. Heather, if it's okay. Um, I wanted to ask Matt, um, I, I know you meant Morning, Morningside, not St. Nicholas, uh, for the path of work, but, um, and you gave the overall schedule and Memorial Day still is, is the date that you're shooting for. Mm -hmm. But when, when do you think they will wrap up the Southern end? So I've been told, I don't have an exact time frame. Um, you know, they were looking prior to the end of April. Some of it is now dependent on uh, what happens with weather. They need uh, a dry spell from what I'm uh, told to be able to lay a, a base layer foundation before they can asphalt over the new path. They've done a lot of the slow hand work where they're installing uh, the the uh, granite block edging all the way around the 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 pathways uh, and now they're they're looking to the kind of the last phases of the the base of the pathway and the asphalt goes much faster but they um, they need some sense the the uh, all the pay, all the pathways are below grade now. There's nowhere there for the water to go, for it to drain out, for them to have a stable pathway to lay the foundation. So um, I can circle back to our our capital team and um, see. I was I was on site last week sometime or a week or two ago, and they were saying, you know, they were like three weeks out. But I think to play it safe you know, I would say the end of April. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, um, let's see, Barry, can you give, um, I, who's going to be presenting from City College um, so that they can have um, the access to share the screen? I think uh, I will just need to stop style. sharing. Okay, go ahead. It's gonna be Carl? Yes, All yes. Right. Uh, let me get this up. And again, anyone else who has joined, please sign into the chat. That's the, the only way um, that I'll be able to note your that you're present. Okay, um, I, I'm uh, a little bit out of breath. I, I wasn't expecting this to begin until somewhere close to 6.30, but uh, uh, let, let me jump right in. Um, this is a, uh, an amendment to a proposal that was previously um, approved by uh, CB9 and Landmarks. Uh, which is involved with making Wingate Hall at City College fully accessible. Um, I'm gonna quickly run through the things uh, that were previously approved. So um, you, you have the context in place, but um, uh, this is really about um, a change in the way we're uh, handling the street access to the building. Uh, again, the, the previous um, submission uh, presented uh, largely uh, interior work uh, to make, sorry, it's a little unstable right now, um, uh, to make the building accessible but the only place where Wingate Hall floor levels come anywhere near grade is in uh, the basement level, uh, which is uh, also referred to as ground level uh, for the, uh, the building department. Uh, the work that was previously 
approved included uh, creating uh, blind windows where there were previous windows into a stairwell. Uh, in that corner, uh, we're replacing one of the four interior stairs with a new hydraulic elevator that serves all floors of the building. If you have a pointer, um, or if you can, with your cursor, yes. if you can point out the areas to us as you're speaking, that would be helpful. Sure, sorry. Um, in uh, the lower photographs, the photograph on the right um, are the existing conditions, which are um, uh, actual windows. On the left, those windows um, have been closed uh, with infill, uh, creating blind windows, um, which is, um, uh, it's characteristic of other windows, um, uh, other windows in, um, uh, on the campus. The other part of um, the, previously approved work was um, taking an existing utility entrance, uh, which has uh, a, a rather inappropriate ramp that was, uh, that was added and um, doing um, a, a somewhat makeshift um, Gothic revival entrance, um, which at the time was the only place uh, where we thought it would be possible to create uh, a public entrance. Um, this location was problematic for three reasons. Um, first of all, uh, it was a rather awkward connection to the interior conditions. Uh, it meant coming into a stairwell under a landing uh, and then across a hallway uh, to the elevator. Um, it's also the only public entrance um, to any building on the old campus that isn't an archway. And finally, uh, it's the only entrance that isn't in the center of um, a main elevation. Um, we have a, a new uh, proposed alternative uh, for that entrance. Um, again, by way of context, um, uh, this is um, uh, Baskerville Hall main entrance in the center of the facade. Um, these are a series uh, of all of, uh, virtually all of the entrances to the Gothic buildings on the campus. And again, um, you can see that um, they're all arches, except for this um, utility entrance, which is not an original opening in the building. This was uh, done sometime, we believe, in the um, early 90s, but we're not, uh, we're not sure about that. It was not uh, a project that we were involved with. Uh, you can see that all the I, again, all the building, uh, all the entrances are arches. They're all centered on uh, on their facades, unless they're double entrances, uh, in which case they're symmetrical around the center of the facade. Uh, here at Compton, and here are the main entrances to Shepherd Hall at the base of the main tower. Uh, and the other thing that's worth noting is that a number of the entrances lie within a field of terracotta. Uh, again, for precedence, um, we've been looking at uh, entrances uh, in Shepherd and have used the entrances uh, to the pavilions. This one on the alleyway, uh, I'm sorry, this one on Convent Avenue. And there's a similar one on the alleyway between Shepherd and the administration building. So, what we found is, as we were doing more work on the building is that the corridor um, was available uh, to serve as uh, an entrance lobby. The previous location uh, that we were looking at was here. And again, it came in under 
the landing of this stair going up and around um, and through the corridor, the elevator. Uh, the new proposal looks at coming directly into that corridor uh, with an arched entrance that becomes part of this field, uh, which is very much in keeping with the, um, uh, the, the elevations, uh, all, all of the original elevations of Shepherd, all of which are somewhat different from one, uh, one another. Uh, this is uh, the plan for the entrance. The floor level here um, is about 14 inches um, above uh, sidewalk level. So we have a ramp coming in from the side plus uh, steps which are treated the same way as um, virtually all of the um, existing or um, modified steps uh, on the, the Gothic campus. Um, this is um, the revised elevation uh, sections through the new entrance. Uh, some details of the ironwork that um, uh, is being proposed. And again, this, this, is, um, uh, th this matches the new ironwork throughout the campus. And uh, um, this is a before image um, Photoshop to remove the trees that are in front of these windows, um, rather unfortunately placed uh, to conceal some exhausts that were run through the windows that are also being rerun to the roof now as part of the work. Uh, of the, um, the alteration. And th this is what's being proposed uh, for the new entrance. Uh, this will be very much in keeping with the, uh, the new stairs and ramp uh, and site lighting uh, that's being installed in Baskerville Hall at the north end of Convent Avenue, um, or the corner of um, Convent and 140th Street. Uh, so again, it's going to be very much in keeping with the way the campus is functioning now. So that entrance that you just showed, um, it, it's, it's yes. just a new entrance. Is there ADA accessibility associated with it, that entrance? Yes. yes. Uh, and is that new? That's new. Uh, can you just point that out for us? It's basically, uh, there's an opening in the low site wall here and a ramp that runs uh, behind the site wall and up to the landing here. Okay. Uh, if you want, I can go back and show it to you on a plan also, if, if you would like. No, no, that's, that's, that's fine. It's, it's very well hidden. It's not visible. That's that's why I wanted you to point it out because yes. everyone may okay. everyone may not have noticed that. Um, th this is actually in keeping with the number of um, ADA access points that we've done in other places uh, on the campus. This is the uh, the fourth one um, that has gone in, and um, unfortunately, when the buildings were built, um, there was. There, there were no on-grade um, access points. So uh, every building has required uh, some work in order to make them ADA uh, compliant. Again, here, uh, you can just see the, uh, the end of the wall here and the ramp runs up behind this wall. And then the one other thing that we're able to do is this door is no longer required as an accessible point, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of an ironic accessible entrance because it brings you into the basement, but there's no way to get from the basement to any of the other floors right now. Um, but there is a rather unfortunate concrete ramp and aluminum railing was put in here. And because it's no longer required for um, 
accessibility, uh, we can remove that and just have the, uh, the plaza extend down uh, with a small step outside the door. And basically, um, that, that's what we're proposing. I, I would be happy to answer any questions or go back to any images that um, anyone has questions about. Can you just go back to an image that shows what what you what was previously shown and what the change is that um, you're proposing? Because yes. I recall you you all presented before a while ago, though. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, the state doesn't always um, move with uh, great haste. Um, What, uh, what was proposed before was removing this, uh, the same ramp and adding this entrance. This would become uh, really the primary entrance uh, into Wingate Hall. Um, it would be the only, access uh, the only wheelchair accessible entrance. And there's also a plan at this point to take an old um, swimming pool, which is in the middle of the uh, the basement floor, and then drops down um, to approximately the cellar level, and make that into a large uh, uh, high tech classroom. So that that's going to become uh, a major uh, focal point of the building, and th this would become most likely the way that uh, people would go to that space rather than going up onto the quadrangle, uh, up another flight of stairs, uh, down a hall, down a flight of stairs um, uh, to the classroom. And um, as I said, uh, at the time that this was first submitted, uh, we understood this would be the only, uh, the only possible location for an on-grade entrance. And um, in the course of the work that we've been doing over the last uh, year and a half or so, um, we were able to convince the college that an entrance directly from Convent Avenue uh, would be um, much, much more uh, in keeping with the program of the building and also would be an entrance that would be much more consistent with all of the public entrances um, to the Gothic Revival buildings. So this is um, the, the one thing that we're changing is that we're leaving the utility entrance untouched except for removing uh, the ramp. And then Go ahead, Liz. Liz has a question. So yes. go ahead, Liz, with your question. Thanks, Heather. Hey, Carl, how are you? I'm good, Liz, how are you? Good, good. Thanks for presenting this always uh, fine detail work from you. Um, so um, where the proposed entrance is going in, the, the, where it's proposed, those windows on the ground floor, are they original? Uh, they're original in design. The material is not original. Uh, as with most of the um, the material um, on um, the west side of Convent Avenue, the terracotta was replaced with cast stone. There's some ter some new terracotta, uh, but in this field, uh, everything except the window sills, we believe. Uh, we're we're going to have to double check that. Uh, virtually all of the material is cast stone with the exception of this window sill, which was done in terracotta. And our proposal is to use um, cast stone to continue the field down. Um, and uh, we will use uh, a uh, a material with a, a metacalin content, which is what we've been using uh, for all of the non-original replacement material, whether it's cast stone or GFRC. 
uh, on the campus. Right. Um, so the the changes that you've been making to the the buildings to add access points on 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 grade on on Convent Avenue that that has been recent. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the the original design, the main entrances are primarily um, like either coming off the quad or they are not direct. They're always to the side, is that right? Um, except for Shepherd Hall. Shepherd has um, one entrance into the pavilion that's directly across from Baskerville Hall, uh, just south of 140th Street. Uh, as an entrance from convent. And that's actually become the de facto main entrance to Shepherd Hall at this point. And there's also the entrance uh, that is at the top of the curved ramp that comes up from uh, Convent Avenue uh, into the bell tower. Uh, but of the other buildings, the buildings on the west side of Convent Avenue, all of the entrances um, were from uh, the, uh, the quadrangle, except for the east entrance uh, to Baskerville. And I, I don't know in terms of the original planning why there was an entrance um, at that point, uh, unless it, uh, there was a thought that there would be um, flow from the pavilion of Shepherd across the street into Baskerville. Right. Um, and what what is your design thinking in terms of having? I mean, you're you're presenting an entrance that looks like it was always there. So what's mm -hmm. what's your thinking of um, putting something in that looks like it's original as opposed to something that is clearly marking that this is uh, not historic and new? Um, I think it's a small enough piece on the building. Uh, that to do something that is contrasting the way we might do an infill building or something uh, in a uh, modern format, uh, I, I think it would be um, jarring and would create a narrative uh, that um, is, is really not helpful um, to experiencing the Gothic campus. Uh, you know, one of the things that we found um, ha has been a major um, concern uh, in all the work that we've done at City College is that there is this um, the, the sense of um, uh, the history, the commitment uh, that was made um, when the original uh, competition was done and when the campus opened in 1907. Uh, to a, a place that, um, that speaks to the architectural history of um, uh, appropriated styles. Um, you know, what, one of the interesting things about City College is that George Post's original uh, competition winning scheme was uh, in a, um, a neoclassical style. And the board of City College rejected that because um, apparently it was thought to be too much like Columbia. And um, they, they wanted uh, to be not, not only distinct from Columbia, but to make a claim that there was a connection back to the uh, universities uh, of England particularly, which is, um, why English Collegiate Gothic is um, uh, the style in question. But it, again, my, I, I think even if you, if you just look at this facade, if you imagine, say, a, a, um, either a minimal um, set of doors or um, glass doors or something coming into the building, it, it, it feels to me to be, um, just not the right place for that kind of a statement. We have another question. Um, I hate to, to cut you off, but there was a, I think, Barry, did you have a question? It's super quick. 
Um, when you were talking about the door into the cellar level, did you say that there was a swinging door that was going to be removed? Or a swimming pool? Swimming pool. Oh, okay, I didn't hear that wrong. All right, thank you, that was the only question. Yeah, no, th this building was originally a gymnasium and um, physical fitness building. Uh, there's uh, a gym on the um, uh, level um, three and a running track at level four. Uh, I'm sorry, so a gym at um, level four and a uh, running track um, uh, Above that. And, and so it sounds like it's still actively used as a gymnasium building or physical educate, you know, uh, well, physical activity building. Not not really. Um, Marshak Hall has most of the gym functions now. Uh, the gym floor is used for um, lunchtime sort of casual basketball games and things like that. The pool has been used um, for storage for the last 30 or 40 years. It's filled with um, junk. And uh, we've been encouraging the college to gradually go through it and remove, uh, really toss out almost everything that's in there. And uh, because um, the swimming pool has a sloping floor, it's going to be a, a perfect um, volume uh, for uh, a lecture room with uh, sloped seating. Got it. Okay, no, I that, that I was just clarifying that statement. Thank you. Appreciate yes. it. No, it's, it's a swimming pool. Oh, and just just for reference, the the uh, the rest of the um, uh, of the building is going to be used for student activities, student clubs, um, uh, uh, basically um, uh, ancillary functions to the rest of the college. All right. So, um, so your application, or what is it that you're asking from us? And if you can just give us the three main bullet points of of your application, and what's re what landmarks is requiring from us to um, have an opinion about? What we're asking for is uh, support for the creation of a new entrance on Convent Avenue, providing. Uh, accessibility uh, and um, leaving the utility door um, as it is, uh, but with the removal of the, uh, the ramp at the, the uh, concrete ramp and aluminum handrail um, and um, minor modifications to the existing uh, schist and granite site wall uh, to accommodate um, the um, uh, the new public entrance and the um, ADA compliant ramp. Okay. So does everyone understand or does anyone have any further questions regarding this application? It's been before us um, previously and we provided them with a letter of support and they're just making some improved changes. Are there any other questions? So then we'll go ahead and, and I'll ask, does anyone um, have any um, issues with this application that is before us? Or are we ready to vote as a committee? for a letter of support for these um, primary alterations to the previous plans that were before us. Okay, so do we wanna provide a letter of support? Is there unanimous consent? I can call for unanimous consent, Heather. Okay, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Carolina. Okay, 
All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Klein. We'll we'll be back in touch in case we need any assistance with any further or clarifying information as we, you know, de develop the letter. Great. Well, thank thank you very much. I I hope my my dogs were not too much of a no. of an intrusion. Uh, it, this just happened to fall at their dinner time, and they're right. <laughs> Okay, okay, so you okay. can stop Thank stop you. stop sharing because we yeah. need to get to the next presentation. Who's going to be presenting from um, Columbia? Is that Emma? Yes. Hi, Heather. It's Phil. Phil Crest. Or Phil. I'm with Columbia, and I'd just like to give a brief introduction to the committee and the community board about the project that Emma will be showing in in great detail. Okay. So I, I'm in, I'm responsible. I'm with Columbia University. Everybody, my name is Phil Kretzmer, and I'm responsible for the engineering design services at the Manhattanville campus and for this building at uh, 611 West 112th Street. Uh, Columbia acquired the property about a year ago, February of 2022. It was formerly a single room occupancy residence. It's about a 120 year old building. Uh, if you're familiar with the area on 112th Street and the building uh, in particular, it's been abandoned and um, neglected for about 15 years. There's quite a quite a bit of work to restore it and we are committed to doing so. Um, you should note that this will be our first fossil fuel free building uh, moving forward. So no emissions will be site sourced from this building. And for the first few years of occupancy, the primary use will be to serve as undergraduates swing space for other properties that we're gonna be restoring uh, as well. The construction start date is late spring of 2023 is the plan. And the end date uh, to occupy is fall of 2024. I have Emma Leonard. Leonard, she's an associate with the uh, Fire Blender Bell Architects to show the detail uh, for the restoration of this uh, building. Right. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Heather, if you could give me permission to share, I'll go ahead and start sharing. Um, you got it, Barry. To Emma Leonard needs to share. Yeah, she should be able to, as long as no one else is sharing. Okay, great. Oops, that is the wrong file. Let me just close that. Are you guys seeing a, a presentation with the, the blue front of the building? Yes. Great. Go ahead. Okay. So as Phil said, we're at 611 West 112th Street. Um, we are bringing this project to you today because we need to go before LPC. Um, we're going to be, I'll give you a little overview of the historical context. Um, so as Phil said, the, band, the building's been abandoned for a while. So I'll give a flavor of the existing conditions. Uh, clarify what our overall scope is for the building, and then go into three specific topics um, that we will be bringing to the LPC hearing later this month. Um, so we are in the Morningside Heights Historic District. We are not an individual landmark, but we are a contributing building to that district. You can see us there highlighted in yellow. Zooming in a little bit, um, we're on the block between Broadway and Riverside Drive at 112th Street. And even in this photo, you, you start to get a flavor for the building. Those black spots in the roof are actually holes in the roof currently. Um, from the aerial views, you get a, a sense of the neighborhood. Um, it is very similar to the adjacent buildings on its side of the block. Um, the one directly adjacent is almost a mirror of it in its H shape. Uh, across the street, we have um, some taller apartment buildings as well as the Bank Street School for those familiar with that. Um, historically, a little background, it was originally built uh, in 1903, so about 120 years old, as Phil said. It was designed by um, Israels and Harder uh, as a, an apartment building. This was sort of typical middle-class housing um, that was very common in this area as the, as the subway was extended and more entrances opened. 
Um, so this is sort of the a very typical uh, plan from that period. It had, you know, the classic sixes and classic sevens. Um, However, over time, it was converted into an SRO by the 1940s. Uh, here you can see the, the tax lot photo. So from the 40s, um, a few modifications by that point, um, and it was converted to an SRO. Um, over time, since then, um, I'll give you a flavor of the existing conditions. There have been further changes. So, um, as you can see, the the cornice at the top of the building and the raised sort of area that existed in the original photo no longer exists. Additionally, the windows were replaced at some point with um, very standard aluminum windows. They didn't match the the historic profiles or mutton patterns. Um, there's been some deterioration of the limestone, some painting, um, as well as an addition of this uh, roll down door and covering of some of the area ways. Um, additionally, this, un this is the condition of the uh, historic entry under that roll down door. It's very deteriorated. Um, just from lack of maintenance over time. This is the areaway on the other side of the building. Um, a door was added at some point. A window was in, uh, um, covered over in order to add these access stairs. However, the, the railing around the areaways we believe to be original based on the photos. Um, this photo is just to give you a, a sense of the, the condition of the building. This is the roof. Um, as I pointed out in the aerial, there, there are quite a few holes. So the, the interior of the building has seen a lot of water damage over time. So as Phil said, we really plan on bringing this building back. Um, it's Columbia's intention is to um, preserve the historic, historic uh, character of the building and um, bring back as much as possible. So on the left-hand side is um, the condition today. Um, missing the cornice, the 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 one over one um, windows, um, and things like that. So on the right is the the overall proposed elevation. So as I said, we're planning on recreating the cornice to mimic what we think was there um, originally, as well as reintroducing the raised parapet um, at the center of the building. Um, and then further down the facade, uh, the windows will all be replaced. Uh, we're currently proposing aluminum clad throughout the building um, and reintroducing the, the historic pattern. So on the typical floors, it's like a, a two by four or two by two, depending on if they're uh, a triple or a single. And then in the floors, um, Three through five, there was uh, historically this diamond pattern. And so we are going to, our plan is to reintroduce that pattern. Uh, additionally, um, we will go through and do a masonry repair for any um, of the brick and as well as the limestone, you know, removal of that paint that we saw in that one image and um, bring back uh, some of the windows uh, in the area way that have been, that are currently just boarded up with plywood. Um, and sort of correcting the door that was in the added in the areaway in place of a window, um, bringing it up and sort of reestablishing the head height of all of those windows. The other major piece that we want to talk about is this new accessible entrance, um, which I'll get into a little bit more detail um, as we go forward. So, like I said, we're going to focus in on those three main topics, um, the windows, the, um, um, the new ADA entrance, and the, the cornice replacement. Those are the three areas uh, that we need to go to the LPC hearing for. Um, so, while we're replacing all of the windows, and our intention is to, to replace them, um, as meets LPC's requirements. Um, the diamond shaped windows are classified as special windows. So those um, will require going before the board um, for or the 
LPC hearing for the, the final review. So just zooming into the windows, um, you, this is that historic tax lot photo. Zooming in here, you can see that diamond pattern, which doesn't exist today. So like I said, our intention is to recreate that diamond pattern using an aluminum clad system um, with uh, a simulated divided light with a spacer bar. Um, and it's a very similar size and proportions, and we can recreate uh, that diamond um, in the same size as we, we assume that it to be. One other condition is, if I back up to the tax lot photo, there's an alleyway to the west of our building. So these, this first row of building, or first row of windows on our lot line is also visible from the street. So also purview to LPC. However, since these are on the lot line, they need to be rated windows. Um, so we are looking at recreating the look of that diamond on, where we believed it to exist as that photo showed on those three floors and matching the pattern of the, the two over three on the other floors. Um, however, it will be out of a steel construction in order to achieve the, the rating that is required to keep windows on the lot line. So just a, a zoom in, sort of the existing condition is a, a one over one. Like I said, we'll be putting back something um, with the diamond pattern. The details for that, as you can see, dashed in red on the right-hand side, one of the main concerns for LPC is the reduction of glazed area. Um, the red lines represent the glazed area on what we believe the historic window to be. Um, and so we only come up to a decrease of about 1%, which is lower than the 6% the that LPC um, allows for, for wood windows. So that's the one on the front facade. These are the specific details using the aluminum clad system. This is the, the rated window on the alleyway facade, the west facade. Um, here, um, due to the size of this system, our uh, reduction of the glaze area is a little bit less than 1%. So again, uh, even though it's a different system, we're still meeting the uh, LPC requirement. So again, here's the details I will point out. Um, what we're showing currently is a rated almost curtain wall system. Um, so it doesn't have the offset appearance of the original double hung, um, but it will have uh, a grill in front of it that will replicate the, the diamond pattern. Um, this is what we need to achieve the two hour rating um, that is required for the lot line windows. The next topic is the new entrance, the new ramp um, on the south facade. So just uh, going back a little bit, here's the another photo, a historic photo close to around the time that the building was built. And you can see the railing that I mentioned that we believe is original. So you can see in the, the current photos. Um, our proposal is to take advantage of the sloping of the site. The, the site is sloping from the east to the west to produce um, um, the shortest ramp possible, the sort of least intrus intrusive ramp um, in order to provide a, an accessible entrance. So here's the drawing of the, the existing condition. It's gonna take just a second to load the new one. But the idea is that we would take out one section of um, the existing railing and modify the rest of the railing in order to, to bring it up to a height um, uh, uh, to accommodate the ramp beyond. So you would enter from the sidewalk and this is actually less than one to 20. And so it's just a sloping surface. It doesn't have all the requirements of a full ramp and it brings you up to a new door that takes the place of an existing window. Um, the window itself is not existing, but the opening is. And so we are um, proposing leaving 
the size of the, the opening, except extending it down to the floor level. Um, we're currently in discussion with LPC over the exact design of this railing. Um, so we're, we're working through that, but this gives you a 3D view of what that is of pulling up that railing, entering the ramp and being able to access that new door. Just going back to talk about materiality for a minute, um, based on photographs, it seems like the, the front door, the original front door was actually a clear finish uh, wood and the surround was a painted wood. So we're proposing to go back with that both at the, um, the front entrance as well as our new entrance. And the design of that new entrance would harken back to the original design of that historic entrance um, within the proportions of that existing opening. We just have another minute, Emma, yep. if you want to kind okay. of wrap things up here. Yep. The last topic is just about the cornice recreation. Um, we're proposing, like I said, going back with something very similar to what was there uh, historically, we including that central parapet. Um, although we're bringing it to the, the LPC hearing because we are planning on going back with GFRC uh, recreated cornice rather than um, the original material and a cast in place for that central parapet um, rather than the what we believe is stone. So if anybody has any questions, I'll go ahead, Barry, with your question. Yeah, two quick questions. One, the doorway that you're proposing for the ADA entrance that's at the existing window width, is that wide enough to meet ADA requirements? Yeah, the windows are fairly wide. They're over three feet wide. Oh, okay. um, so we do have room, just trying to back up to that overall elevation. Yes, it will Got be it. wide enough, yep. And then um, the second question is the, the letter of support you're requesting for LPC um, what is what is the item number, not what is the item number, but the item number appears to refer to a letter of status. Um, can you explain what it is exactly that you're going before the LPC for? Um, I'm not sure I know what you mean by the, the number. The docket number that you gave us was for a status update letter, and it doesn't um, really oh. pertain to actual work. Um, that, let me give you an updated docket number. I, that doesn't seem right. Um, that might have, um, we are calendared for essentially this presentation on the April 25th meeting. So, um, let me reconfirm that I gave you the right number. Um, cause based on this address, I, I couldn't find anything for for new work or for a new a new um, hearing date, because okay. everything else that you've previously submitted was for certificates of no effect. Yeah, this is the first um, that we've submitted with with Columbia as the owner, and recently, those might be old. So, but but I'm I'm not going to take time now for you to search for right. the docket number. But there are, there are a couple of um, there are a couple of issue additional issues that um, that we need to work through. It doesn't appear that your ramp is complete yet, so we need to be able to see what the final LPC approval is for the ramp before we can make a determination. And also there's been, um, there's quite a number of people in the community who have questions about the presentation and need to be able to provide input. Have you discussed um, the, the, your plans for this property with the surrounding neighbors? Yes, and- And what has been, um, what have you been told? What has been the result of the conversations? So Heather, I believe Columbia has had uh, initial meetings. I know that they're fielding email correspondence from community members 
And I do know that the uh, university will be committing to meeting with uh, the local community and the neighbors to further update uh, more details in the general uh, aspects of this project. Okay. What do you, does anyone know what the concerns are? I do not know. Okay. This is the, can I just say, uh, I'm from the community and um, this is the first we've seen anything from Columbia. There was a meeting where they talked in general about um, that they were going to, that they had bought this building and they were going to be renovating it, but this is the first we've seen anything. Um. Okay, we're getting, well, my, um, well, there's a few concerns. One is we, we always require um, community involvement, community input, community support. I have concerns that the ramp, that we need to be able to see what the final ramp is going to look like before we can offer a letter of support. Does anyone else have any questions in the last couple of minutes? Um, uh, there's another raised hand or go ahead, whoever was speaking. That, that That's me again, Heather. Just uh -huh. given that this, I know we had to move the time up for Passover to try to get this meeting over by sundown for those who are observant, but you know, even for those who have just plans for Passover that preclude them from attending this meeting, um, one question I have is, can this be pushed back so that we can have a fuller airing at the May, at this top of the May 3rd LPP meeting or, you know, conceivably at our April 13th executive committee meeting? Because um, I just, you know, I know that Passover is a, not a good date for many people to attend a community board meeting, myself included. Well, my feeling is I we, we need the actual docket number for this work and what we were provided was not the actual docket number for for this um, for this work. It's very important that we have that um, uh, because sorry, this is Aaron Lamport from Buyer Blender Bell. I have yeah. in the chat posted in the docket number as it was given to us by LPC. I am not sure if that's different than the original number you were provided with but there is uh, a full number in the chat at 628. Okay, I'm not able, I'm not able to check that right now, um, but, but hopefully it will be different from a status update letter because LPC stopped giving status update letters, I think on March 6th. So we need an actual docket number for this work. Yeah, um, I just and we can. and we and we also actually need what the final design of the ramp is going to be. So I am going to request that you all come back to the May third meeting and provide us with that information and what the final design for the ramp will be. Does anyone have an issue with that? Ask. It was mentioned you might have a possibility for us to instead come to the mid-month executive committee meeting. And I guess I would ask, is that a possibility? The point being we are on the April 25th LPC hearing schedule. So if there is a means to have a follow-up conversation ahead of that date, that would be extremely helpful in terms of you know maintaining the public hearing date. Um, the, the issue is that we, we have to work through issues such as this mm -hmm. at a committee level first before mm -hmm. it goes to the executive committee mm -hmm. um, because the, the, we're dealing with so many other thing items on the executive committee from other um, committees within the board mm -hmm. um, and to be able to give an opportunity to the um, members of the community um, that appear to have questions um, and, it, and and I haven't heard that that you all have an understanding about what the issues are. And I don't know what the issues are and I'm curious to know what the issues are and, and those have to be worked out at the committee level first. Okay. Um, I think I can speak a little bit about the, the issues um, that we've heard from Columbia so far are not related to LPC related topics. It's about 
the type of students that will be living here um, and the, the fact that Columbia purchased it um, from the, the um, from the attendance at those community meetings, those seem to be the the concerns that have been raised, which I don't. Could you repeat the last one? Uh, I said the the type of students, whether they're graduates or undergraduates, and no, sort of no, the other thing that you said about oh, how it was purchased. Uh, that um, just that Columbia purchased it, and what they're they wanted to hear more about their their long-term plans for this building, which don't necessarily affect the content of this meeting. Uh, I can add that uh, those issues did come up in a general meeting with uh, Columbia, but um, there were, I have heard I, from people who were not able to be here because of Passover, um, that they also wanted to have an opportunity to weigh in on the uh, historical uh, preservation issues and what Columbia was planning to do in terms of uh, the facade work and entrances and windows and so on. So specific to to this um, modification. And this is the first um, we've seen any anything. Thank you. Okay, the time is now 6.34, so we're over time. Um, I promised that we would be complete by um, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll throw this out to the committee. Um, I, let's see. Um, we, we don't have a complete presentation and we don't have an actual docket number other than a status letter update, which I know that um, LPC doesn't provide. So I'm going to ask um, that we hold this over until the May 3rd meeting, unless Barry, you can always overrule me and say something different. No, that works for me. I, that's preferable, I think, certainly. So, you know, and I understand that there was some difficulty in scheduling this meeting um, in terms of the getting a response and getting the agenda put together. So I, I think it is fair to just hold this over till May. If I if I may ask of the committee, um, just the general, do I have a moment? Sure, go ahead. Is that Phil? Yes, thank you, Heather. Okay, go ahead. I'm just interested, you know, and forgive me, I'm an engineer, not very familiar with these situations, but we're presenting the rest of, basically the full restoration of the facade of this once elegant building from 1903. I thought that was the in, intent of this uh, committee. And I think the docket number is according to what you put up, Aaron, 23-08973? Correct. I mean, unfortunately, that is the number. I just reconfirmed what LPC sent us, but I'm not did, sure did why that all... doesn't align. Yeah, I, it's it's showing a date that it was just that the case was just open, I think, on March 28th. But that's not the issue. We need to see the final design of the um, of hmm. of the ramp. So I can back up and say that this is where we're going. We haven't shown this to LPC yet, but this is our intended design that we will mean instead of modifying the historic rail, we are planning on keeping the historic rail and doing a much simpler, very uh, picket style rail on the ramp. Um, the pickets would sort of mimic the spacing and the materiality of the grills. Um, at the at the windows. Okay. okay. So um yeah, but in, in light of the community um input that we require and I, I just I, I need to feel comfortable that the community has had an opportunity to weigh in. So we're going to um ask you to please come back on on May 3rd. I, I had invited you all to our March 1st meeting, but I didn't get a response. So we could have um we yeah we hadn't submitted to LPC yet. We didn't 
at that mm -hmm. time have the docket number. So unfortunately, okay. we, yeah, I understand. I understand that. But I just want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to voice any concerns that they have. And at this point, they haven't been able to do that. And I understand the holiday and we, we have to um, move forward um, and, tr and try to and I just ask that you please come back on our May 3rd meeting so that um, anybody from the community between now and then will have an opportunity to voice any concerns. And it's just not only our committee, this will have to go for a full board vote. So it's just in, in people from other committees may have other issues, other concerns that we have to make sure that we're able to work through. So that's why um, starting at this committee level is very important. So, um, and, and, you know, we'll, we'll invite others from other committees as well as the general public to weigh in. But, you know, I appreciate what you're trying to do in, in restoring any building that's been dilapidated for as long a period of time as this one is, um, it, it's important that we get this right and that we have community input. Okay, so, but I'm going to have to move the agenda on. Thank you so much. Unless someone wants to overrule me from the committee. Okay, Liz, um, Carolina, Tiffany, I see your hand up. I missed it before. Did you have a comment, Tiffany? Uh, this is probably not the space to be raising the comment or question, but... My concern or uh, about who would be in the building, what students would be in the building is um, is in the interest of maintaining the affordability of it, which was the design or the intention when the building was constructed as a middle class um, residence. I, I would hope, I'm sorry, did you say that this was going to be just a dorm, a graduate dorm or? Um, but anyway, that's probably beyond the scope of what you both can do, but and that's most likely a question to be raised elsewhere. But I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. And by the way, you guys did a remarkable job of preserving the, um, not only preserving the, the, um, the facade of the building, but the details didn't go past me. I think they look excellent. Thanks. Phoebe, I see your hand raised. Go ahead. Hi, Heather. Um, I was just curious because we, the Columbia did attend a meeting hosted by the Morningside Heights Community Coalition where residents uh, sort of air their grievances and raise questions about the project. So I'm just wondering what else is required in terms of hearing from the community in terms of this project? I'm, I'm not familiar with that meeting, so I can't speak to it. Um, I just see that there are plans that are incomplete and we we need to, in order for us to vote, we need to see the plans that are actually submitted and approved by LPC okay, so at I, the hearing and they're oh. not complete. Okay, thank you. So I understand there's a discrepancy around the docket number and incomplete. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because the doc, there's there's some kind of issue with the docket number. I can't explain it. Go ahead, Liz. I'm just here to say you're doing a great job, Heather. You are our leader and we will follow you. Good job. OK, um, so let's go ahead. And um, I think we, we can almost close up the meeting because every everyone else sent me um, any updates. I just want to make sure. I'm sorry that we went a little over time. I did not want us to go past 630. But um, let's see, we've gotten to everything else. We'll pick up our old business at a later time. Is there anything in old business that anyone is having a burning question or issue about? Or if you could just please send me the updates, that would be great. Is there anything else that we need to um, take care of in this meeting? Anyone? So we'll go ahead then and I'll just ask, um, can I get a motion then to adjourn the meeting at 642? I'm moved. Yes, second. Okay. All right, um, so let me just copy the chat. I don't want to miss, let's see. 
I don't want to. Let's see. One second. Don't don't stop. <laughs> Can't copy the chat. not saving okay so we'll go ahead and we'll end the meeting then at 6 43 thank you so much everyone and please um heather? come come to our may 3rd meeting heather were you able to save the chat i'm saving it right now and if anyone else just does a backup <laughs> okay i saved it heather okay great yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Sorry we went about 10 minutes over, but we had a lot to cover today. Have a good Easter. Have a good Passover. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. All right. Goodbye. <laughs>